Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ken Carty. Please remember to like and subscribe. Now today we're going to look at evaluating the limits of functions involving radicals. So you can watch my previous video where we look at limits involving a factorization method. Now we have three questions here so you can pause the video, work them and come back and look at the solution. We're going to start with A. Now from module 1, you would have had experience involving thirds where you would have had to rationalize. But before we rationalize this, in order to evaluate the limit, because here we have an expression in the numerator that doesn't have a radical. And in the denominator, we have an expression that has a radical. So in order to work both expressions together, we're going to have to rationalize the denominator so we can eliminate the radical. But before we do that, this is a question that could also be factorized because if you look at the numerator carefully, we could write that as a difference of two squares. So I could write the numerator, so let me come back here, as root x plus 5 into root x minus 5 as a difference of two squares. Because root x squared is really x, 5 squared is really 25. So all over the root of x minus 5 as x tends towards 25. Now we can reduce. So the root x minus 5 here is going to take out the root x minus 5 there. So this expression becomes the limit of root x plus 5 as x tends towards 25. Now we can go right ahead and do our direct substitution. So I'm going to end up with the root of 25 plus 5, which is going to give me 10 plus 1. Well, it will just give me 10, actually. So technically, one of the reasons why we had we had factorized is that when we had gotten this expression, which is x minus 25 as a radical, then we could simplify. We're going to put the second approach adjacent to it, where we're going to try to get the radical now to look like the expression without a radical. So we said from module 1, we deal with thirds to rationalize this. I'm going to have to use the conjugate of the third. Now the third here we have, or the radical we here we have here is root x. So we have root x minus 5. So that entire expression, the conjugate would be root x plus 5. So I'm going to multiply this by root x plus 5 all over the root of x plus 5. So this becomes the limit of, I'm going to have x minus 25 here. So I'm going to keep in a bracket. And I'm going to have root x plus 5, which I'm going to keep by itself as well. In my denominator, I have the difference of two squares. So I could say root x squared minus 5 squared. Now let's break this down. So we have the limit. So it's 2. In my numerator, I still have x minus 25. And I'm not going to expand this bracket because I need something to be cancelled out. And I have root x plus 5. But in my denominator, no. Root x squared is just going to be x. And 5 squared is going to give me 25. Now, we see things that look alike. Look in my numerator, which is already factorized. I can eliminate the x minus 25 from both the numerator and the denominator. So, this is gone. This takes all that. So, what I have here now is the limit of root x plus 5 as x tends towards 25. Sorry, this should be 25 coming all the way down. So, we simply input that 25. I'm going to have root 25 plus 5, which of course is going to give me 10 as well. So we get the same answer with both approach. Now right, we're going to move to question B. Now in question B, I could also modify the x minus 1 to look like the radical in the numerator. But it might be simpler with this question if we simply apply the conjugate technique. So my numerator is root of x plus 8 minus 3. So the conjugate of that would be the root of x plus 8 plus 3. Alright, so we're going to multiply both numerator and denominator by it. Because by the multiplicative identity, we're only allowed to multiply an expression by 1. So I'm going to have the root of x plus 8 plus 3 all over the root of x plus 8 plus 3. So this is broken down as a limit as x tends towards 1. My numerator, as you can see, is the difference of two squares. So I'm going to have the root of x plus 8 
all squared minus 3 squared all over x minus 1 multiplied by the root of x plus 8 plus 3. Now in my numerator, when I square the root of x plus 8, I'm simply going to get x plus 8 and 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to have minus 9 all over x minus 1 times the root of x plus 8 plus 3. Now let's continue. Now simplifying the numerator is going to give me x minus 1 all over, which is what I want, x minus 1 multiplied by the root of x plus 8 plus 3. So this takes this out, so I'm going to put the limit as x tends towards 1 of 1 over the root of x plus 8 plus 3. We can go right ahead now and substitute the 1. So I'm going to have 1 over the root of 1 plus 8 plus 3, which is really 1 over root 9 plus 3, which breaks down to give me 1 over 6. And that's my final answer here. And of course, you can always write a concluding statement. And therefore, the limit of this expression as x tends towards 1 is equal to 1, 6. I'm out of space. All right, let's move on to question C which is the limit as x tends towards 6 of x minus 6 all over the root of x minus 6. We could actually look at this from two methods because both methods will be pretty straightforward. So we're going to look at the rationalization method first and then we'll look at a second method that we could actually use to evaluate this limit. So in my new denominator here, I have the radical, which is the root of x minus 6. And if I want to get that, rid of that radical, I simply need to multiply it by itself. But we can only multiply an expression by one. So it means now I'm going to have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the radical. So I'm going to have root of x minus 6 over the root of x minus 6. When I break this down, it becomes x minus 6 in bracket. Very important, we put that inside of a bracket times the root of x minus 6. My denominator now is now a perfect square, so I'm going to have the root of x minus 6 all squared. So this becomes the limit of x minus 6 times the root of x minus 6 all over. Now, of course, when we square a root, naturally it will take out the square root, so I'm going to have x minus 6 here. So the x minus 6 will take out the x minus 6. This is going to leave me with the limit of root x minus 6 as x tends towards 6, which is going to give me the root of 6 minus 6, which is going to be equal to 0. And of course, you can write your concluding statement. But let us look at this from a different perspective. Limit as x tends towards 6 of x minus 6 over the root of x minus 6. Now, the root of x minus 6 is really the square root of x minus 6, which means that I can write x minus 6 as a root term. So it becomes the limit as x tends towards 6 of x minus 6, the root of this, squared over root of x minus 6 because I do know that when I square it and I square root it then of course it's just going to give me back x minus 6. Now we can split it so it becomes the limit of root x minus 6 times the root of x minus 6 all over the root of x minus 6 as x tends towards the 6. So the root x minus 6 here will take out one of this in the numerator. So I'm going to be left with the limit of the root of x minus 6 as x tends towards 6, which is then again going to give me root of 6 minus 6, which is the root of 0, which is going to give me 0 here. And of course, as we say, you can write a concluding statement for this.